The topic of the carrier useless theory, which first emerged during the Cold War, has resurfaced recently. Some believe that the current arsenal of weapons capable of threatening carriers is increasing, with advancements in medium-range missiles, hypersonic missiles, drones, and submarines making it difficult for carriers to survive in large-scale conflicts. The U.S. magazine The National Interest even stated that the era of the invincible U.S. aircraft carrier is over. However, some reports suggest that carriers are far from obsolete, and their roles in modern warfare are constantly evolving, no longer limited to traditional sea and air combat missions. So, which side is right? What is the role of carriers on the battlefield, and how will they evolve in the future? The U.S. raised the carrier useless theory as early as the Cold War. However, at that time, the U.S. itself continued to commission one carrier after another, while the Soviet Union genuinely believed in this theory. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Soviet Union realized how deeply mistaken they had been. But it wasn't just that the U.S. misled them, the battlefield conditions of the time did, in fact, limit the usefulness of carriers. Back then, the focus of research for both the U.S. and the Soviet Union was on intercontinental missiles and nuclear warheads, capable of striking targets from extreme distances without the need for assistance from sea-based airfields. Naturally, aircraft carriers seemed unnecessary. During the long 40-year Cold War, the naval strategies of both the U.S. and Soviet Union shifted dramatically, affecting their perceptions of carriers' utility. From the 1950s to the late 1970s, the U.S. Navy and government held a pessimistic view of the Navy's role in countering the Soviet fleet. The U.S. fleet's air defense capabilities were limited, with the E-1 warning plane lacking reliable look-down radar detection and aircraft missile and radar systems often failing. This left the U.S. vulnerable to Soviet 216 bombers carrying anti-ship missiles. Given these shortcomings, the carrier useless theory seemed reasonable at the time. What was unreasonable was the Soviet Union's unwavering belief in this theory. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S. Navy demonstrated the effectiveness of carriers by blockading Soviet armed shipments to Cuba, conducting low-altitude reconnaissance on suspected military facilities, and preparing amphibious assaults with an intimidating show of force. In contrast, Soviet bombers like the 216 could not maintain a sustained air presence, while U.S. carriers could. If a conflict erupted, Soviet fleets without air cover would be easy targets for U.S. air power. Soviet submarines meant to hunt carriers couldn't even reach the battlefield. Following the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Soviet Union realized their misjudgment and began developing carriers. However, designing a carrier is like combining an airport, an arsenal, a fuel depot, a command center, and a massive power plant onto a single vessel that must be fast, durable, and hard to detect. This complexity led Soviet carriers, from the initial Moscow class to the Kiev class and later the Admiral Kuznetsov, to fall short of U.S. Navy standards. By the 1980s, U.S. carriers reached new technological heights, reversing the balance of power. The E-2 warning plane's radar improved, enhancing look-down capabilities. The F-14 and AIM-54 missile combination allowed for effective long-range patrols. Automated defense systems like in TDS and Link-11 increased the U.S. fleet's reliability and response time. Aegis systems and SM-2 missiles further strengthened the fleet's ability to intercept missiles. The introduction of these advanced technologies allowed the U.S. Navy to neutralize Soviet reconnaissance aircraft like the 216R and 295RT before they could even enter reconnaissance range and effectively intercept incoming anti-ship bombers. Afterward, aircraft carriers became the hallmark of major naval powers, setting them apart from other fleets. However, the development of offensive and defensive systems, like the metaphorical shield and spear, has always been imbalanced. The advent of hypersonic missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles has brought the carrier useless theory debate, which originated during the Cold War, back to the forefront. But is this really the case? Is the aircraft carrier truly obsolete? 
Since the invention of the aircraft carrier, targeted strikes have generally fallen into two categories, air-based weapons destroying the carrier's flight deck, preventing aircraft operations, or sea-based weapons like nuclear torpedoes attacking below the waterline to sink the vessel. While carrier groups have numerous air defense systems, they still struggle against overwhelming or saturation attacks. Submarine capabilities have similarly improved, with greater intelligence and longer-range weapons allowing for strikes from beyond the range of anti-submarine aircraft. Meanwhile, building carriers is becoming more expensive, with increasingly complex technology and requiring entire fleets of destroyers, frigates, and submarines for protection. The high cost and limited survivability have led to the rise of the carrier useless theory. Essentially, this theory is similar to the tank useless theory. As strike weapons continue to develop, the survivability of carriers, like tanks, has significantly diminished. Some argue that the development of such weapons should be stopped. However, the decline in their survivability does not necessarily mean that carriers are useless. Despite the changing threats, the role of carriers remains crucial. They provide a rapidly deployable combat system capable of strategic projection and quick response to unforeseen events. Fundamentally, carriers are mobile airbases, and as long as airstrikes remain a decisive form of naval warfare, carriers will retain their importance. Moreover, the role of modern aircraft carriers goes beyond combat. Thanks to their massive size, carriers not only serve as mobile airbases, but also function as command centers for naval operations. In actual combat, aircraft carriers take on the majority of battle responsibilities, including, but not limited to, air traffic control, situational awareness of regional threats, over-the-horizon guidance for carrier-based aircraft, missile targeting for friendly forces, fleet command center, and anti-submarine warfare command, among other roles. The U.S. military, for instance, often establishes its theater command center in the operations room of an aircraft carrier. The number of command personnel on carriers far exceeds that of other vessels. For comparison, the U.S. Ticonderoga-class cruisers have 31 command stations, Arleigh Burke destroyers have 21, while the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers start at 70 command stations. Additionally, the role of aircraft carriers in modern warfare continues to evolve. Today, they not only execute traditional sea and air combat missions, but also participate in non-military actions such as disaster relief and humanitarian aid. Weapons are not only for combat, but can also serve as a deterrent in peacetime. Overall, carriers offer a singular method of global strategic transportation and tactical deployment, allowing them to easily engage in countering hostile nations, protecting trade routes, and more. To claim that carriers are obsolete is premature. Of course, like any weapon, carriers have limitations. The key question now is, how should aircraft carriers evolve in the future? As an advanced platform for projecting military power offshore, the aircraft carrier is far from useless. Consider the example of the battleship. Although it became outdated, in the 1991 Gulf War, the U.S. Navy still deployed two Missouri-class battleships whose large-caliber naval guns demonstrated impressive firepower. Looking at the history of weapons development, the demise of a particular weapon is not simply because a weapon that can defeat it emerges. Instead, it is because a superior replacement arises. Battleships disappeared not only because they were vulnerable to carrier-based aircraft, but more importantly, the firepower projection capability of aircraft carriers far exceeded that of battleships. From this perspective, aircraft carriers are irreplaceable. Neither missile ships nor nuclear submarines can substitute the role of a carrier fleet in naval warfare. The only alternative comparable to an aircraft carrier is a fixed land-based airbase, but these bases have limitations, they are stationary and easy to target. Moreover, carriers continue to evolve and revolutionary changes are not out of the question. For example, the USS Gerald R. Ford is equipped with electromagnetic catapults and more advanced arresting gear, allowing for faster, more efficient launch and recovery of aircraft, as well as the deployment of more powerful jets. Clearly, the combat capabilities of carriers have not diminished due to technological advancements. Instead, they are continually improving. 
One thing is certain, on the battlefields of the future, naval air power, like that of aircraft carriers, will remain a standard feature of great powers. However, the notion of dominating the seas with just a few carriers is becoming less likely. That concludes this video. Do you think aircraft carriers will have a future replacement? Feel free to leave a comment below, and let's discuss together.